Now, in this day and age, if you look around, look all throughout society, look at the mainstream media, look at some of the actions we're witnessing all around the world, look at some of the laws that are being passed, are godly morals being upheld? Are godly standards being upheld? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. In his day, Noah had to build an ark in order to be saved from the judgment of God. But today, God has provided us an ark of safety and his name is Jesus Christ. God has provided us with a way to be saved from eternal damnation. His name is Jesus Christ. The question that you and I are to answer today is, are you ready and willing to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who will save us from the coming judgment of God on this world. And so I encourage you to be always in right standing with God because the Bible tells us that when Christ comes, it will be sudden and unexpected. Two people will be working in the field. The one that has accepted Christ as his or her savior will be taken. The other one will be left behind. Two people will be grinding at the mill. The one who has accepted Christ will be taken and the other left behind. In Luke 17, verse 27, the Bible says, people were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. The people of Noah's time were living lives of ignorant bliss, without any concern or fear that their sins would bring down on them the judgment of God. And so, if you can hear me right now, you still have time to get ready. You still have time to make sure your life is in order. So get ready, be ready, and stay ready. Live for Jesus Christ. Do not be caught up by all this world has to offer. Live for Jesus Christ. Repent and live right before God. James 4, verse 4. The Bible reads, You adulterous people, do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That's a loaded verse. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Meaning that if you're friends with this world, you are opposing God. If you get along with the values and morals of this world, then you're hostile towards God. This verse challenged me. So I began to ask myself, how am I different from the unbelieving world in which I live? How is my mindset different? My perspective, my, my priorities. How am I, a born-again Christian, different from the world that I live in? How do I conduct myself? How am I as a child of God different from an unbeliever in this world? So let's look at it this way. When I'm facing difficulties and going through hardship, how do I react? How should I react? Firstly, the Bible tells us in James 1 verses 2 and 3, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. The meaning of this verse is that we are at times tested in order for God to produce greater things within us. Now, the worldly view would tell us that if you're going through tough or difficult times, find a coping mechanism, find an outlet, a release. And nine times out of ten, that outlet is some form of ungodly behavior. But the emphasis from the worldly view is on you being in control and finding a means to relieve yourself 
from the difficulties you're facing. But the godly view is that when you meet trials of various kinds, walk by faith and not by sight. Lean not on your own understanding. The difference here is that you are looking to God instead of some quick fleeting pleasure in this world. Now, how does a Christian react versus an unbeliever when they are disappointed and discouraged? The Bible tells us in Romans 8 verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. That means if I've worked hard and done all I can to get that promotion, to get that big break in my career, and it doesn't happen, then I won't sulk or be miserable about it. I can express disappointment as a child of God, but I'm not overcome or overwhelmed by disappointments. And this comes from the faith that all things, that means everything, every yes or no, every open or closed door, all things work together for my good. But the worldly view, the worldly view is one that would not have as much hope or joy. It's a view that would entice you to complain, to sulk and wallow. The worldly view is a stance that would even encourage you to go head to head with others, all so that you can get what you want. The emphasis once again is on that person being in control. Now, when it comes to the area of searching for a sense of fulfillment or purpose, the Bible tells us in Galatians 5 verse 13, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Children of God are called to be servants of the kingdom just as our Lord and Savior Jesus was when he walked the earth and gave his life. The worldly view is that you only have one life to live. Do what's best for you and live your best life. It's a dog-eat-dog world. Only the strong will survive. Every man for himself and God for us all. Ever heard those sayings? The emphasis again is on you. But the godly view is to serve. Serve for the glory of Christ. Serve the body of Christ. Be a servant and put away selfish desire. That's where we as Christians should get a sense of fulfillment.